This is Ted Boardman again with part two of the Expose Transform Helper tutorial. We've got the helper set up centered on the light in our scene and reporting the distance of a reference object which is the airplane in our scene. We now need to take that reference information, that distance to reference information, and connect it to the intensity of our light. We're going to use the wire parameters for that. So I'll go to the animation pull down menu, go to wire parameters and choose wire parameters. Because I have the helper object selected, this gives me information about the transform settings for the help for the helper object and the object's own numeric values. I hover over the object exposed transform helper option and we see all of the numeric values associated with that. It's the distance that we're interested in. The distance is going to drive the intensity of the light. So I make sure that I choose my light next. H key will help me get there. The photometric light. I pick that and here again I can either access the transform information or the lights properties. It's the intensity of the lights properties that I need to wire the distance to reference to. This brings up our wiring diagram and here we only have the option of controlling one way from the helper to the intensity of the light. So I click on my one-way connection button and then I connect the two together. What this now tells me is that the distance is now controlling the intensity of the light. Well, at this point, that gives me a light intensity of 4212. I have no idea whether that's appropriate or not. But remember that as the plane comes closer to the light, this number diminishes, i.e. the light reduces in intensity. Just the opposite of what I want. So I need to say that we want to use the inverse of the distance. So that is 1 divided by the distance. 1 divided by the distance. Well that's okay but that gives me a very small number. For example in this particular instance it's 1 over 400 and uh, 4212, so one four thousandths intensity. Not nearly enough to give us enough light to see. So we're going to take this one divided by the distance, we're going to place it in parentheses, and we're going to give it a multiplier. So the times indicator, and I had to experiment with this. It's going to be different for every scene because of the difference in distances and the difference in uh, size of the scene, etc., etc. But I found that one, one thousand million, so is that one billion? One followed by nine zeros. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Gave me an appropriate value of my light. Now I need to update that new formula. One divided by the distance in parentheses times one billion. Click on the update button and then if I re render my perspective viewport over here, let me just click on my quick render button. A little bit too large. Let me close that out and go to cancel that. I thought I had set this up before. Let me go to smaller rendering so you can see it. There we go. And you see now that we have a dull light over here in the scene. But that's okay because the plane is a long distance away. We don't want a particularly bright light. Now let me show you another control that I have introduced in this process. If I select my light and go to my modify panel, you'll notice that the light is showing a couple of spheres around it. What I have done is I have enabled the far attenuation here. In order to give myself more control over this light, I use the far attenuation to determine how far the light can cast its effect. 
if I leave it to mental ray to render that, it uses the inverse square attenuation. That may not give me the kind of control I want, and it, when the light gets brighter, it might light up too much of my landscape. So what I've done is made sure that I am controlling how far this light can possibly shine. And again, this is going to depend on every scene and whether or not you even want it. But this is something that I found was very useful. Far attenuation. A lot of people forget that that can be activated for photometric lights to give you more control. So I make sure again that my scene is updated and if I bring my plane closer to that light, drag my slider, here's the plane coming in right next to it, and I render that scene again. Let me just do another quick render. We'll see that that light is considerably brighter. Considerably brighter. So as the plane gets closer, the light gets brighter, exactly what we want. Close my render window, and I'm going to close my wire parameters. I now need to select my light and my transform type in, and I need to copy this. So make sure that I get both my light and my transform type in selected. And I want to have two rows along the runway. Well, notice I've got some stakes along the runway already. I use the tool called the Align tool, excuse me, the Array tool, and I used a two-dimensional array to distribute these objects. Now I want to make sure that I have a copy because each of these lights and transform combinations want to act independently. So I'm going to have to experiment a little bit. How far do I want to go in the in the right? Let me try in the X direction. Let me try 15 feet and I want to preview that and here I've got You'll be able to see this a little bit easier in the top viewport. Here I've got 15, uh, excuse me, 10 lights that go off in the X direction. Well, now that I'm previewing that, now I can start to manipulate this in the length that I want. Let me zoom out a little bit so we'll be able to see the whole runway here. There we go. Well, it also needs some Y increment values. Now, something like about a 24 let me do that then I'm gonna need a negative number here to make the lights go in the direction that I want so I've got to again experiment a little bit there we go that looks pretty good and I don't need 10 so I'll come down and get eight lights spread over the length of that runway so you can see it right here this uh, Array tool is powerful stuff, but I want a two-dimensional two array, and I want a total of two lights in the second dimension, and that's going to be in its Y direction, I believe. So here, I start to bring my Y direction down. I'm dragging my spinner here, get it over to the other side of the runway, have to use the X to push it back. Now this is going to take a little bit of finagling, so that way a little bit. A little bit more on the X. Negative number to spread it out. Again, I'm not being too exact on this. And not too much fooling around. There we go. Bring that down. Bring that down a little bit more. Down a little bit more. Okay. I should have taken a little bit more time and figured that out ahead of time. But you see now I have an array of two rows of lights in our runway. I click OK. Again, make sure that that's copies because they need to be independent of each other. Click OK. And now I've got a series of lights along the runway. If I drag my plane back so that it's quite a ways from the lights, you see that the lights are essentially out. But as the plane approaches the runway, you see how they're increasing in brightness. Let me Alt W to get this up full screen. And the lights 
get brighter as the plane gets closer. Render that one view and we'll be able to see now that the lights are the brightest right where the plane is and duller away from the plane. So we've used a combination of exposed transform helper object to read the distance of the airplane from the light and then we use the wire parameters in order to connect the two distance value and intensity value of each light to give lots of control for our animated lights along the edge of the runway. I hope that's helped give you some ideas on how the the um, exposed transform helper can be used and especially in conjunction with wire parameters. Again, this is Ted Boardman. I'd like to thank you for watching this tutorial.